there we go. First thing we want to do, or the next thing we want to do, is we need in our four badger in bad guys, what we need to do is we need to get rid of the badgers. Because if you play long enough, and you, you know, if your game goes on for 15 minutes because you're so good and you don't have a time limit, um, you'll have a thousand badgers that your game's keeping track of. That's too much and it will slow your computer down. Which is one thing, <clears throat> if you guys, I know I've had students do like zombie games or whatever, or they've messed around with it and you have really slow moving zombies and you have a bunch of them. As soon as you get more than like 30-ish on screen, it slows down a lot, just to the way we're writing the code because it's intro. Um, so what we need to do is we need to delete and get rid of them. So we're gonna be using, well, technically something called pop, but it's it's delete, so. All right, so what we're gonna do is right above four badger and bad guys, we're gonna throw up index is zero. Now what this is doing is we are going to keep track. In order to keep track of which badger gets deleted we have to keep track we have to have some sort of index we can't just say um that badger you have to distinguish between this badger and that badger and because we're not doing 4x in range length of bad guys where uh, where x is a number we're using bad guy we have to you, we just have to have an index so index we're going to start with index is zero And then what we're going to do is this line right here for screen or screen dot blit. That's at the very, 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 very bottom of our badger list or our badger for loop. So we're going to keep it down there for now because everything else we're going to do. The last thing we want to do is we want to figure out where uh, the badgers are going to be. Are they have they been hit with an arrow? Have they not? Uh, they've been deleted we need to delete them and then once we've figured out everything we need to do with our badgers then we blit them blit is just putting them on screen so visually seeing them so that's the last thing as you can see down here right after badger zero uh what we're going to do actually right above it, we're going to throw an if statement in here our first if statement is to see where they are on screen and if they have if they've hit our castle we need to delete them we need to get rid of them and then when that happens we lose health but we haven't created health yet so we'll deal with that later so if badger zero is less than badger zero is less than, is less than 64 wait this happens later is there a bracket? yeah you know I don't think we need this loop this if same it's okay it doesn't hurt we're gonna go bad guys dot del er I'm sorry delete bad guys in, uh, index in the code that I have it there's a another method called pop which we'll go over um, it's not pop is more when you're doing a text oh yes can you explain what you just did with that one? Yeah, so when our bad guy, so I'm just gonna run it. So look at, they stop here, so that they're hitting our, they're getting to our castle, right? They're attacking our, our baby bunnies and they're being deleted. So, so let me go back and without this, Notice how he's going past it. Mm -hmm. And he's actually technically going off into negative X, right? So he's going off screen forever. So again, once we have enough badgers, it will slow down our game. And so we don't want that. So this if statement right here basically says, if the image of our bad guy, if the position of our bad guy gets to 64, which is essentially the middle of our castle, we're gonna delete it. Yes? Why do we need the index? Yeah, we're gonna add the index. We're gonna have a bunch of the index zero is well. What if if I have
So if this is my bunny with his crossbow, and he's shooting this badger, and I have three badgers on screen, and they came in this order. This is the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. And I shoot this one. If I don't have an index, you'll delete this one. And so we'll be adding to the index. Yeah. Okay. Because if you if you don't tell it which index bad guy to delete, you have to keep track of them as they come on the screen. That's why we have that index. It'll make more sense once we Wait, have more of the code. Says, like, the first one, then the second one, then the third one. Like, it's yeah, but if if I shoot this bunny or if I shoot this badger, I have to keep track that it's the index. Okay. Index three and not index one. So that's why that bad index is there. Okay. <clears throat> so bad guys delete. Okay. And now uh, we haven't done the arrows yet. All right. So now we have our badger moving and we have a badger hurting us once we get to a certain point. Now, you guys know what hitboxes are, right? Who does not know what a hitbox is? So a hitbox is, if, if this is my guy, so let's play, I'm play, let's say I'm playing like a sniper game, right? And so there's this person. Maybe I shouldn't say sniper game. A game where we're aiming a nerf gun. Nerf gun. There we go, a Nerf gun game. So let's say this is whatever you're trying to shoot. This is your target. Actually, this is what I'll do. Right? So the hitbox of the bullseye is the area in which, if you hit, counts as a bullseye. So you could have, let's say you're... So you should just... Here's, here's a present. If you were to, in our game, we need to create a hitbox that goes right around the edge of the item because if we pick up an item and our hitbox is over here, you'll actually run into it and then the thing will disappear. So we're creating what are called rectangles around our objects based solely on the picture. I recommend for, and this is actually also how you do power-ups. We'll, you put a rectangle, or I'll just put it here. You put a rectangle around your bunny based on the image. So this red outline is the hitbox. And then let's say you have a star power-up the hitbox around this front should, it's really, really hard to do anything that's not a rectangle, at least in Python, the way we're doing it. So our hitbox is going to be like this. And when this hitbox or rectangle hits that one, then you have something happen. Then you get your power up. A hitbox is just a way to determine whether or not two images or two things collide, two, if, they, if they touch or interact with each other. Make sense? So if you, if you want something to interact with something else, kind of caught me that time, um, you have to have hitboxes. And once you do, once you put a hitbox around the player, you can put a hitbox around any other image, and when those collide, you get a power-up. Or the difficulty changes, or you lose, or blah, 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 whatever you guys want. Does that make sense? So is there only box colliders, or is that like you can, but it's like you you all you don't need to have an image. It's just a lot easier because I can say put a rectangle around that image, as opposed to put a rectangle at this point, this point, this point, and this point, and connect it and create a rectangle. Now scoot that rectangle that way. It's easier to have it around an image. But that that also brings up a very uh, uh, brings up a, a good point. What we're going to do is we have to tell, if this is our badger, I'm just gonna keep using this. I'm also gonna make sure that people 
that the, the recording is a little bigger for. Then the image is, um, if the image is too big, then it will look at the image and make a rectangle around the image. Okay. You don't have to do anything. If you had a big bunch of like blank space though, and then an object in the middle, would it draw around the blank space? Mm -hmm. It's around the entire image. So if your image technically is a little <coughs> black circle, but the image technically is this, and this is white space, your hitbox will be around the image, not around that part. So what we're going to do, and I'm telling you this before I have you guys type it because I've done it the other way around and no one understands. So here's our badger. I'm actually going to have to draw this one. One, two, three, four, with this little tail. So this is our badger, and we are creating a hitbox. around them. Sorry, I'm not an artist. Those aren't straight lines. It's not even a rectangle. But this right here, this part, actually, that part is the top and that part is the left. Does that make sense? Right? I have the top line of my rectangle and I have the left line of my rectangle. Now this is something you guys should be paying attention to up here, not looking at your surface, because conceptually this is really, really, I wouldn't say really, really confusing, but it's confusing. So that I have my left portion, or the left line and my top line. In our code, we are going to say the top line is equal to the Y sign, the Y coordinate, And the left side is equal to the x coordinate of our badger. So, one sec. So, if our badger's position is 100, 100, we are going to say that the top, that the left portion is equal to 100, and our top portion is equal to 100. What this allows you to do is it's basically saying we've created a uh, a rectangle around our image and now we have to tell that rectangle to move right if we only create a rectangle where the the where the badger is spawned then we're just gonna have a box here and then 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 one here and they're never actually going to interact with the, with the user so what we need to do is we need to say as as the badger moves to the left moves towards our, our castles over here, we need to have the box move with it. And the way we do that is we say the top line of the, of the box is here, is equal to this, and the left line is equal to this. Conceptually, does that make sense? You can also say um, left or bottom and right, but because everything is based off the top left corner, we're just going to use top and left. You can, now this is for something that you guys can do on your final, is you can go to that pygame.org slash docs and look up the rectangle command because it's like, it's actually just R-E-C-T and then a bunch of stuff. And you can create your own rectangles. You can fill the rectangles in with different colors. You can do a bunch of stuff. Um, so that's something if you want to learn on your own for your final, that's totally acceptable. Totally something you can do to you know fill in the, you have to do something on your own. You have to learn something on your own, implement it in a game. That would count. Um, maybe not just filling in a rectangle with like red, because that's not that much. But that sort of thing, making your own rectangles. Any questions on what we're going to do in the next 20 minutes? Just one question. Yeah. So would you have to define top and left before? Yes, you, you do. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to define the rectangle and then once you've defined the rectangle, that rectangle has properties that we're that yeah that will that that we'll use. So would you have to say like rec equals like? We'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Luke. Oh, I was gonna ask if I have there's time to give another restroom real quick. Sure. I'm not gonna like force you to stay, but okay. Yeah, so let's change this back to normal. 
All right. Let me, jump. Let me get this up. Okay. So what we're going to do now, this goes right under Badger, our movement of our Badger. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're doing Bad Rect. What do you think that stands for? Bad Rect. Badger rectangle or bad guy rectangle. And that is equal to pi game dot rect parentheses. All right? So what we're doing, pi game is the module, rect is the function. The function, the rect, is going to now get an image and create a rectangle around it. So all we're gonna do, yes, Kayla or uh Josh. Does the rect all like for the beginning, does the R always have to be capitalized? Yep. Because I know in JavaScript it's always lowercase. It, this has to be capitalized. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna go bad guy image dot get underscore rect. Get rect! <laughs> I'm gonna do that like almost every time, so get used to it. So what this is saying is that we're creating a rectangle based solely on the size of the image of the rectangle of the badger of the bad guy image then what we're going to do bad guy dot top or not bad guy sorry bad rect and then we have bad rect dot left okay so if going off of what I said on the on the board Hopefully one of you guys will raise your hand. I don't have to randomly call on you. What does bad rect dot top need to equal? So what do I type in? Badger X position. It's the well, you guys got badger, right? Now, do I put badger is made up of what right now? Six forty one. It well, it's just an x and y coordinate, yeah. right? X is zero, y is one. So you're not really putting numbers in it, or you are putting numbers. I I have to put numbers in this. You would put zero. For which one? So, oh, the y. the y. Yeah, and then the x no, would be. The, we're not no, no. What do you mean the y? So, so, so for the left, for that left, that needs to be one or zero. I have one person saying one. Thomas, you got an idea? No. Uh, uh, Micaiah. Any of the shadow, Mason or uh, Anthony, right? Was it Anthony? Alex. Alex, sorry. Alex or Mason, any idea? You know, if you each pick one of the numbers, one of you will be right. What number do you think, uh, Alex? Zero or one? One. What do you think? Zero. Zero. So left needs to be zero. Top needs to be right. Do you guys understand why that is? Right? Be Oh. All right. <laughs> That's very rude to say, Nick. It's very rude to say. Don't, don't say that. He doesn't know that. I like the I didn't know that. Luke. Um. You you took the bad you took the bad zero zero uh seven out of the four loop. No, it's still in the for loop. Ignore that and ignore that line. It's still indented one. So, look, the left side of my rectangle is dependent on my x coordinate. What are you laughing at, JD? Nick just can't read the screen. Oh, okay. Christine. What I don't understand is how bad we talk is bad. One, like a coordinate destination? Badger one is right. So every badger, right? Badger in this for loop is the x y position as a list. So it is. But why isn't it like something comma something? Why is it only one thing? Because the because that top line only needs one position. 
So the way it works, the way it works is rectangle. All right, I'm erasing some of this. So when we create a rectangle, in order for a rectangle to work, you need essentially an x, y, width, and length, right? You need a point here that's an x and a y, and then you need the w and the l. And then it fills in, well, we're going to put those two there. So what we do is when we say rect, we define this as the, as the width and length of the image. So all we need to give it is the x and the y. And the way we do that is their top is based on x and y is based on, no, it's the other way around. The x position is, is yeah. Uh, that, so the left is, yeah, left. So that's how that works. So once we create our, once we create a rectangle with our W and L with our image, we don't need to do that. And then we just need to tell it, hey, the top part of this is going to be based on our badger position X, and the left part or in the Y, the left side of our rectangle is based on the. X position of our badger and the top position is going to be based on the Y position of our badger. Because again, going back to this drawing, my top side of the rectangle is the same as my X coordinate. And then the left side is the same as my X coordinate. <laughs> One of these days I'll get through this without, without screwing up. This is why it's really kind of confusing because like you would think whatever. You're going to confuse explaining yeah. Yeah. Because you're like, wait. I I know. I admit. I, yeah. The top part of my rectangle is dependent or is the same as the y coordinate of the badger. So it's sort of like when you have uh, zero and one and it's flat, like that. Zero over one and it's flat. Yeah, like it's half when you're graphing. I've, it's been too long since I've been in math for graphing. Do you it the same way as you would with like letting anything on the screen? It's basically a coordinate plane. And you little guys just in the whatever, or the or whatever. whatever yeah. Thing. However, it helps. But do you guys have once once you kind of get okay? Top is based on the y position. Left is based on the x position. You can copy and paste this to use it for anything that you need to use rectangles for. And zero one is zero and one because zero just represents the x and one represents the y. Yeah. So if it's a zero one. So if it's at what? No, never mind. Again, badger right now is badger. So we have bad guys. This is just a list with a bunch of little lists. And so this is Badger. Badger index, well, I won't do that. And then it shifts, and then this becomes Badger. Let me, let me print something real quick. Maybe this will help. Um. Also, why is it like an list format? How else are you going to keep track of? Nope. This is this is just for me to. Oh, I have one question though. Hey. So, uh. Yeah. So like, why would X be one and then the Y coordinate be zero? What would happen if you switch them around? Say that again. Like what would happen if you put the y coordinate as one and the x coordinate as zero? You wouldn't your 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 the rectangle for that badger wouldn't be in the right spot. You could shoot into no you could shoot into empty space, the arrow would disappear, and a badger would disappear that's down here. Which I mean if you want to screw with the player, I guess, but so this is again just for import time. 
So this is going to display our list of bad guys. It's going to slow down our game. And then it's going to pause. Okay. So this is showing us that we currently have one bad guy, one badger on screen. And then it's going through that it is currently working on that badger. And once we have more, you will see. But again, as you can see, it's. But you notice the guy, he's going to the left seven pixels per cycle. I think I put sleep in the wrong spot. And that's what you would change if you were going to make him faster. Mm hmm. So hang on. Did I? All right. Slide this. Over here for now. Come on. Can pausing really not handle what? That's why you got to write efficient code. Print. Um. No, that's 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 my fault. Hang on. So I'll print bad guys at the end, and I will print this here I mean it looks like it maybe not it's fast oh it doesn't help that I put it hang on that that was dumb of me I had to pause every second there we go. so as he's coming over another one's gonna pop up shortly so you, once, once, once he's, he's done, done writing his like route kind of thing. All right, hang on, hang on. As soon as this one dies, I'll pause it by. So what this is saying is that there are no bad guys on screen. That's all it is. I have zero bad guys in at all. And then as soon as our timer hits zero, we create a new bad guy and he starts running across the screen. What's the timer? Is it two seconds? The timer is every 70 cycles. So at this point, it's like every two or three seconds. So again, he dies. Then here's another one. So another one should pop up when this guy's right about here. See, I wasn't that far off. And then now it'll be give or take here. So now look, I have two bad guys on screen with the position of the first one being 150.87. And with this position of the second guy being 63221. And then what it's doing is that it's cycling through this badger. Is this badger close enough to being killed? Is it past one is it is it past 64 pixels? Or is it is its X position 64 or lower? No, that's basically all we've coded. So then it jumps to the next one. And then it cycles through all of our bad guys and determines where they are, what are they doing, and that sort of stuff. Do they need to be there? Have they been deleted? Blah, blah, blah. And then it goes to the next, and then it loops again, and says this is, these are all the bad guys on screen that we currently have. So badger, anytime you see the word badger, is dealing with the individual badgers that are on screen. Uh, and in this case, badger is 143 and 87. Or I'm sorry, the badger position is 143, 87. Then if we keep letting this go, now another one will pop up. And they get, actually, you know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to change the spawn rate. Now it's going to spawn 10 times as fast. So how many badges on screen can have been handled? I don't know. Depends on how strong, how fast your PC is. But does that make sense? So I have, I have a list of bagger of bad guys, in which they are filled with badgers. And so each one of these badgers is represented by those two numbers on screen. That's their X Y position. Does that make sense? So again, every time we see badger, we're talking about the individual one inside of the loop. 
Yes. They don't use Pi game. They don't use a Surface. They, um, the more they have a physics engine. Like we're creating our physics from scratch, and so we're coding that in. We're just more efficient coding, bunch of stuff. Do they code like how much do you think they code? Like how many pages of code? Um, I don't know about that. I don't know if video game developers like physically code that much. A lot of them use engines that are created by a separate company. There's like Unreal, the Unreal Engine, which <laughs> isn't created. It was created by a company that then other video games use it. So Unreal, I don't know who makes it. Epic Games, Epic games makes Unreal. And they, they update it. They make the physics better and all, they optimize it. So that it runs better than this, so it didn't, and that it didn't take that much code. No, it takes a lot of code. But a video game developer is like they 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 take that. It's like if you're building models, right? Mr. Burek doesn't physically melt the wax, put them together, and then paint them and build his own thing. No, he buys them pre-painted or whatever, and then he builds his own world. So the pieces are built by another company that then video game developers, I'm sure they do a bunch of coding, I don't know how much, okay. and then they put those pieces together to build a video game. Okay. So it's like all the things that you basically already made, they just add on to it pretty much? Yeah, it, I mean, it's like... Like they already have pre-built renderers, they already have pre-built physics engines, so like if we were, were to drag our character, a lot of the times you can just drag the sprites into the engine. We, the second you hit play, if it has physics applied to it, it'll instantly fall off screen. So you have to like mess with physics to make it be a We essentially are creating out of ex nihilo, out of nothing. Okay. And video game developers have the world built already. Oh, okay. So it's like the difference between God creating something out of nothing. He's like, he physically did the physics or whatever, versus I am going to build a house out of wood that's already there. We, we are creating the wood to then build a video game so it's not at that efficient. Okay. We know the game better and we can go in and tweak the physics a little better than potentially a video game developer because a video game developer can't necessarily go in and change the Unreal Physics engine to solely for their game. Okay, so it's like a different type of code that they use? Yeah, well, they do a bunch of different types of stuff. They also uh, write it better than I am. Um, which one are we on? Oh, and printing stuff really slows down your computer too. Oh, really? Yeah, so like if I don't have print, so I mean that's not going. Whoa, Yeah. So, so does it randomize like the position with each little badger? Yep, that's that's what this line of code we coded that. The random random thing. Yeah, that's what um this that's what this code does right here. Okay, that's cool. Luke. Yep. Can you rate yourself one out of ten in your skill in coding? Oh, like. What's one and what's ten? Ten like like wizard. And what's one? What's the word for like a computer with that? What's and what's one? All right. And then just like you know what I mean. I'm like negative twelve, something like that. One's twenty-seven percent. No way. I love it. No. All right. So we have a minute left. So what I we our game really doesn't look any different than how we started. But what we've done is we have put the, the groundwork for having interactions between our player, uh, the arrows we shoot, and our badgers, right? So starting Monday, what we'll do is we're going to, it will get, again, you guys really need to understand for loops or loops in general and lists. This is kind of the application of loops and lists together. Um, well, but yeah, so we're gonna have a list of bad guys and we're gonna have a list of arrows. And we're gonna have to cross reference. Does this arrow, does the third arrow I hit, hit the fourth badger on screen? Because if you don't do that right, if, if arrow number three hits badger number four, badger one disappears. 
So I'll see you guys Monday. Have a great day. Um, have a great weekend.